Hello and welcome to Sarastro's Painting. In this video I'll be painting Asajj Ventress from Atomic Mass Games Star Wars Shatterpoint. I'll mainly be taking a fairly standard base colours, highlights and finishing touches approach to bring this beautiful sculpt to life. And as usual I began by priming the miniature in black followed with some zenithal highlights, a process you can find fully explained in the first episode of the series. So let's jump in with the base colours. As I often like to do, I'm starting by painting the eyes with an off-white, in this case Scale Colours Nakar. I'm then using some black to place the pupils and paint the surrounding area, trimming the white parts back as I go. Next I'm painting the skin where I've chosen to use a base tone of brown grey to capture her desaturated look. This will basically be the shadow tone for the skin. For a quicker approach you could certainly start with something a fair bit lighter if you wish. For the wraps on the arms and the waist I've chosen to use a roughly equal mix of Griff Charger Grey and Margos Purple. We also decided to add a couple of drops of contrast medium to thin things down. The reason I've chosen speed paints for these areas is just to help achieve some quick and easy definition as the paint flows nicely into all of the little gaps and recesses. I'm also using this for the belt, the foot and the lightsaber handles. For the dress I'm using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of violet and navy blue. I've chosen not to start too dark here so as to reduce the amount of highlighting that will be needed later on. So this is basically the mid-tone for the dress, to which I'll be adding both shadows and highlights in a moment. This colour is pretty opaque but may still need a second layer for any areas that appear a little thin or patchy. For the hanging tabard I'm darkening and desaturating some sunset purple with just a little black. You can see I'm doing my best to avoid the golden design. For the golden elements I'm using Iroko, also mixed with a touch of black. I went back and forth a bit between the two colours to achieve a level of neatness that I was happy with. I'm now sketching in the colours for the base as detailed in the earlier episodes. This could also be done at the end, I just sometimes like to do it early to give me a better overall sense of how the model is looking. The colours here are mainly graphite for the grey areas and brown leather, orange leather and some Morocco for the earth. This might need some refining later on, but let's now add some highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin, where I'll be adding increasing amounts of pale skin to the brown grey, and later on a little Caribbean blue. You could use pretty much whatever pale desaturated skin tones you like here. I'm starting by just adding some pale skin to the brown grey. I'm 
I'm taking my time here, gradually building up the values to create a nice sense of volume. I'm now also adding in some of the Caribbean blue to create a bit of tonal variation. I'm continuing to push the values with some additional pale skin. The skin doesn't need to have an especially smooth finish, and you can see I'm doing a bit of stippling here on the head. For the lips we want a dark reddish tone, and I'm using African Shadow. Followed with a little tidying up. I'm now using the same tone I used for the dress to draw on the facial tattoos, at least for the front and sides. And if we're not happy with the placement, we can always adjust things with the skin tone. The paint doesn't need to be fully opaque here, in fact a little translucency can help the tattoos appear a bit more natural. I'm now just creating a highlight tone for the lower lip by adding some birch, and any creamy off-white would do for this. Next I've decided to create a more prominent stripy pattern for the arm wraps. To do that I'm using some black, white and violet to mix both a dark and a light purplish grey. This is highly optional of course, and you could just leave them as they are if you like. I'm starting with quite a dark tone, and just picking out some of the strips of wrap in a loosely alternating pattern. I'm then using the lighter tone to brighten up the lighter parts of the wrap. We can then lighten both tones with some additional white to add some highlights. I'm also adding some stripes to the right foot. Next 
Next I'm going to highlight the tabard. I'm starting with the golden design where I am adding some additional Iroko to the black and Iroko base tone, along with some Mojave white. I'm initially bringing up the values for the whole design, then focusing more just on the lower half which is slightly more upturned. I'm also now adding some Mojave White to the violet and black base tone we used for the rest of the tabard. I'm also incorporating a little of the Araco. You can see I'm using the edge of the brush tip to pick out these edges. I'm once again pushing the highlights furthest for this lower portion of the tabard. Here I'm adding a few final highlights to the golden design. I'm now painting the buckle with the same colours we used for the tabard. This means starting with a base of violet and black. I'm then pushing the highlights nice and high to create the impression of a metallic finish. A quicker alternative approach here would be to use a metallic silver base colour, then apply a dark purple wash or speed paint. For the raised detail in the centre of the buckle, I'm applying a touch of pure white, followed with some fluorescent red. Moving on to the dress, I'm first adding some black to the violet and navy blue base colour to create a shadow tone. I'm then brushing this into all of the main areas of shadow. And for the highlights I'm adding a mix of violet and sky blue. For large flat areas like this I like to build the values up quite gradually to help create a smooth gradation. And 
I'm also using the shadow tone for these fine seams in the dress. You can see I'm building up to a pure mix of the violet and sky blue, reducing the size of the areas of highlight as I go. Notice I also like to pull the pigments towards the areas of brightest highlight. Finally, I'm using the off-white tones that I mixed earlier for the arm wraps to brighten up some of the panels on the belt and add some fine edge highlights. This is pretty optional. Notice I'm quite happy to leave the waist as it is. With the highlights complete, let's now add some finishing touches. The main thing left to do now is to paint the lightsabers, so I'm firstly ensuring that they have a clean white undercoat. We can then simply mix some red into the white to begin adding some colour, and you can use whatever red you like for this. I began with a very pale pink, but soon started mixing in additional red to increase the saturation. For these lightsabers, I initially decided to leave a prominent strip of white along the length of each blade, according to the primary viewing angles. So you can see I'm building up the red tone more towards the back and sides of each blade. I'm building the red up in a few stages, and might occasionally return to a lighter intermediate tone to soften out any hard transitions. I'm now switching to add some careful black lining where the outfit meets the skin. I then decided to go even deeper with the red on the blades. And here I'm brushing some thinned red into the shadows beneath the cheekbones to help tie the model together, another very optional touch. After pushing the blades to pure Antares red, I decided to add a secondary strip of white to each one to further break things up. There's no right or wrong here, and I enjoy exploring a range of approaches when it comes to painting lightsabers. I'm now also brushing some thinned red into the main shadows of the dress, once again to help unify the look of the model. I'm now drawing on the remaining tattoos at the back of the head, which I missed earlier. I 
I didn't get things completely symmetrical here, but it's close enough. And this completes Assage Ventress. Thank you so much for joining me, I do hope you found the video useful. As usual, you'll find a full list of paints and brushes used in the video description. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Shatterpoint. Happy painting!